What's up guys and gals? Today we are doing something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how I walk through a reel, uh, examine it and just do a, do a kind of a thorough diagnosis on it. This reel is one of, I think it was six that a customer, a local customer who's a subscriber dropped off that said the reels have never been serviced. And I said, let's just go ahead and round those things down to over 20 years of lack of service on these reels. So let me show you what I do to test these things out, see how they're how they're faring, and what needs to be done to fix them. Uh, this one works the way it should. I did a preliminary test when when I met up with him, um, and everything seemed okay in general. But to do a full or a thorough test, then that's what I'm doing now with you guys. Now, as we can see on the outside on these on this TLD25, this is the older, I believe like probably 80s kind of reel. And there's a couple ways you can tell that. One on the outside, of course, this doesn't necessarily have to be the case. This could be a handle put onto it. But the black handle was a staple from way back when. Now you have a silver handle. There's also another way or two inside that I know of that you can also check to see if this was uh, or is uh, an older TLD25. But it just looks kind of old. So <laughs> that's one good step. Okay, so I went ahead and tried the surgeon's knot or surgeon's loop knot in here uh, because I want to test the drag out since it has a line on it. But the first thing I'm going to do is I want to max this out. I want to get as far down as I can and still have free spool on it. Now, before I test the drag, I'm going to test the crank on the reel to make sure that the bearing inside still feels okay. So we're at this point where I'm all the way down, I can't go anymore, and we still have free spool. That's also indicative of the older reels. They had this situation where you could go all the way down on your on your your preset knob or your control drag control knob and not bottom out whereas the newer ones they have a little bit more drag and you can bottom out and stop your free spool motion i'm going to pull it into strike mode and i want to see how that feels and i can tell you it does not feel good and you see the herky jerky stuff happening there i'm using the same constant pressure I'm going a little bit more when it gets stuck. Uh, let me show you what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to be fluid like that. And what we're feeling here is herky jerky sort of stuff. That's just indicative of the pinion bearing being bad or going bad. Uh, but it doesn't stop me from doing the next step, which would be to test the drag out on this. So now we're still at the bottom of the drag, still in strike mode. Now I'm going to take my loop knot and I'm going to test it out. And my goal here is to find the drag in the neighborhood of, on a full spool, 13 to 18 pounds of drag. I mean, that's, let's say 14 to 18, but 13 should probably work out as well. And that's all I really need. I don't need much more than that for this reel. Uh, anything more would be kind of damaging it or pot potentially damaging it. And we're there. We have 15 pounds of drag, which is ideal for this reel. I don't need any more than that. And all that's telling me is that everything the way it is, even if it's been used a thousand times, the lever, the, the body or the follower inside, the tension knob, all those things work properly. The drag probably works properly as well. Maybe dirty, you may have to flip it or something. But this entire setup right here works properly. I do not need to replace it. All I'm focused on at this point in terms of replacing is the pinion bearing. So now I'm gonna test the clicker. Sounds good, but I will do one final check when I get inside there. Uh, as I alluded to earlier, the drag, I will check to make sure that's good. And I'm also gonna check the other bearings, not just the pinion bearing. So I'll see on the other side of me opening this reel up. Now we're going to stop right here. We can see that bearing has a ton of rust all over it. So it makes sense that it's going bad. Now when I said earlier I would test the reload because it has line on it, what I basically mean is since it has line and a full uh, full spool of line, is that it's, it's easier to test it that way. If it didn't have line on it, I will still test out the drag because I want to know that. Because I want to know what I'm looking for in terms of replacing if I need to increase the drag power on this reel. Now let's go ahead and show you the other way that I can tell if this is an older reel. If I couldn't tell from the outside. And that is to open this up. So 
sometimes you need a, a larger screwdriver to open it up. This one seems to be, yeah, this one's good. So I'll take this off. i just remove that cover. And that's what I'm looking for right there. See those little slots or slats inside there? Those empty spaces or channels. The newer ones just are straight flat. Now let's go ahead and check out the drive and those bearings that are inside there. Yeah, the drag's a little worn, so we'd probably replace that. Or not replace it, but if the other side is good, and I'll show it to you, we'll flip it. Let's pull that out so you can see it first. That side is not too bad. I would probably flip this one. Yeah, I would probably flip it. Uh, we're going to check these bearings. We're going to pop these out. That one looks pretty bad inside there because it's stuck. Let me show you what it looks like so you guys can see it. You can see that rust in there. So that's frozen in there. We need to take care of that. All right, now that's out. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Uh, and this is this is my general rule for for bearings. If you have rust on the outside but nothing on the inside, then you can go ahead and keep it. If you start having rust on the inside like this, that has a tendency to kind of seep into the bearings or to the balls inside and affect the spin of them. So in all likelihood, based on what I'm feeling here, I'm going to replace this bearing. Let's test the other two bearings out and see how they feel. dry but functional which is good and the same for this one now we can go ahead and pull this out this may or may not be easy but we're gonna find out right now oh that was pretty easy I expected it to be frozen in there honestly so so now here's a great example for you guys of how something still works when you pull it out but we know it's bad because of the test we did earlier so I'm obviously replacing this. So the two things I'm doing so far are replacing that and that, and I'm flipping the uh, drag washer. Last thing I would look for is this, and it looks pretty good. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but there's a slight amount of wear on that hole right there, and that channel where the this pin and shaft goes through. And you want to be aware of that or careful of that because if that gets too bad, you'll get a lot of wobble in there and then it affects the reel. The reel becomes unusable, you'll need a new frame. Uh, but everything else looks good. I said I would check this click ball here. And that looks good as well. There's a little bit of rounding at the top, but it still sounds really good, so I would not change that out. What I would look for um, for more there would be um, a piece chipped out of it. And it's kind of what it looks like. It looks like someone just took a hacksaw and just shaved a piece off of it. Those kind of click tongues I would probably replace on these reels. But in all, I think this is kind of what I would expect for a reel that hasn't been serviced in a very long time. Uh, so it shouldn't come as a surprise for the parts that need to be changed up. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you appreciate content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Guys, one thing I didn't tell you about the drag washer. Uh, the reason I would probably use this um, is because even there's even though there's that discoloration there, this is a dry washer. If you have this kind of discoloration, you want to look at it and check, check to make sure that there's no moisture on this because the uh, moisture on this is a killer of this drag washer. It does not work well uh, using drag, drag grease, oil, any of those things does not work well on these titanium drag washers. Uh, color is a great indicator of that, but this is a dry drag washer, so I would reuse this 80% uh, of the time. So I'm still contemplating whether to change this out or not.